Good morning, it's Andrew from ARD. Welcome to the channel. Well look, today we've got a, a little exciting project. Um, there's a client coming to speak to me within the next half an hour and um, we've got a, a, a sort of a float. Uh, one of these things where the, there's guys pushing a, a trolley around the streets of Belfast City and they've asked for PA and it wants to be loud and lively. It's outdoor and uh, there's not much of a budget on it so that's okay, I can work with that. Um, I've got some older equipment but it's buried. So the first thing to do today is to get the door open and uh, we'll try and unearth some of the older equipment uh, which is good for outdoors. <laughs> Um, so we're in the equipment store here, and it's of course it's untidy. I mean, what are you going to do? Um, in behind all of this, there, there's a dozen double eighteen Electro Voice subs here, which are absolutely superb. Um, it takes a fair bit of power to drive them, and that's okay. But in the back, there's something which is a good bit more efficient. But um, it's a it's a horn loaded twenty one inch sub and they do pack some serious punch with not very much power like 600 watts will drive them to the same sort of volume as one of these with about 4 kilowatts um, which is why this appeals to me because the float um, will have you know sort of petrol generators which isn't ideal um, so this is one of our trailers an empty trailer or at least it will be and I'm going to put a system in here and take it away up the yard here um, drive it with not a petrol generator but I have an inverter 12 volt battery inverter here in a box somewhere and uh, even though it doesn't look terribly amazing this thing here whenever you whenever you switch it on there's a little bit of battery life there we'll maybe hook that onto the charger now at this point as well so there's, there's just a 12 volt car battery there and a two kilowatt inverter so as a test rig um, that should be okay for today um, it looks like somebody's cut the plug off that one which is great so we'll have to try and find a plug So. I'm just going to push this up in, I've emptied this out. This is treacherous. This tread plate here is as slippery as it gets. I thought tread plate was meant to be not slippery. I'm not sure why, but somebody's taken the, well, they haven't taken the plug off, there it is, but I'm kind of bothered why somebody would actually cut the plug. I think maybe they closed the door. So, I want to get, what is this thing here? I want to get some power into this battery now, quickly. So we'll get this big fast charger here. It should be set to 12 volts because the lorry's 24. I'm gonna whack a bit of power into this now here while this plug is going on while this guy's not here yet. Twelve 
12 amps. That's fine. 20 amp. Used to be able to do a plug in under a minute. Can't do it no more. Right. So get that charge for a bit. I'll maybe knock it back off the mega charge rate. Yes, the cables are burning. That's good fun. Such excitement. So. Now, somewhere along here, there should be monitor amp rack. There we go. It should be three of these here. And for this particular thing, I'm probably going to have to take the amplifiers out. Because we need sub mid high, which is three channels of amp, which gets you into the second amp. Um, of course, this thing now is on the way. That's, that's okay get past somehow. So one monitor amp rack. In you go. Oh goodness that's so slippery. Yeah. And we'll just plunk that down there. And I don't normally put the brakes on but since this is in a trailer my intention is to, to try and make this be as if it is on one of the floats. So it needs a radio link. So that's one of my um, smaller monitor amp racks. Um, four 1200 watt amps. One will drive this, and another one will drive a mid-high cube. So we'll get a mid-high cube down here as well. And then he'll be able to hear the whole thing. But first, we'll go upstairs and get the the relevant cable. Okay, the land of cable. Yes, I know it's untidy, but uh, that's what two years of lockdown does. That's all our conversion, uh, which means something to something. This lot is all the same things to the same thing. So like an extension lead, 16 amp. There's a um, bit of IEC, a little bit of power con, speak con. Uh, some mic leads, but mic leads all stay downstairs. They do not really need to come back up here. So for this, short leads are better. So I use the resistor color code, so orange is three. So there's an orange. And let's do another orange. And we'll do a short link lead. That will do. That gets us out of the amp rack. Um, we need to get into the amp rack. So for that, two things required. One is power, and they are actually done with 32 amp power inlets. So we need a 32, so that's conversion, which should be over here. Should be. Should be. There should be a box of special conversion. And the reason I'm hesitating is because I have a feeling, of course, that it's all... Well, that'll do it. We'll do that. One of those, that's 16 to 32, which is safe. Before you write in, that's safe. And then a 13 to 16, that's safe. Because you can draw not no more than 13 amps off that fuse. Which means the cable's good for 13 amps to there. 13 amps to there, up to 32. It won't pull 32 amps, I can assure you of that. And if it did, all it's going to do is pop that fuse. And I, I promise you, it just won't do that. Right, signal into amp rack. Let's use one meter. We'll bring a couple because we'll probably need two. Um, what else do I need? No, that's probably enough. Now, the uh, the way this thing's going to work is I'm out of breath because I ran up the stairs and back down again, which just proves everything we've said in previous videos. <sighs> These floats are going to be operated from the one at the back will actually drive PA on the one at the back and a little bit of PA on the middle float pointing back the way and then the one in the middle will drive its PA pointing forwards and the one in front of it pointing back so we need to do radio links between each 
Um, so what I've done is I've got an IEM and uh, we'll put some power into it here. So that's the power in at the back and we'll do this lead here. Don't roll away on me now. So that's the left right. And I've got this little radio cassette deck. Uh, yes, amazing. So let's find a frequency. 87, 90, 90.1 is radio 2. That'll do. Let's plug that in. So now that should be sending a good hot signal into this. And, oh my goodness, yes, it's hot. So let's pull it back a wee bit. Um, neg 12 sensitivity. Let's see now what the numbers here. We make that neg 30 decibels of pad. Yeah, that's probably 30. I prefer that. Um, I prefer to drive it. Right, better level. Okay, so there's good level. I'll not go above neg 5, roughly. 630.500. That is now transmitting stereo. Check that it's in stereo mode, stereo. Although mono would do, but that's fine, stereo. And um, so let that cook. That's now transmitting radio two. Totally illegal, that's fine. We'll get the, the license for all of that sorted out. One amp rack. Um, first thing to do, is to try and get some power this orange lead and i am really been careful on this <laughs> holy um, thing here because it's so slippery that's what happens when you leave the flipping trailer door down all night right, is this going to reach? probably not get out of the way you right that's good enough because we've got this thing here and I'm trying to do this with one hand, it's not easy. So 13 amp, up to 16, limited to 13 amps of course. And then 16 up to 32, and then that can go in there to the amp rack. Power on, and these all should light up. Boom, 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 boom. Don't need the bottom two today, so we'll turn them off. Off and off. So it's set for monitors, which are the T12 1.4. Um, you press that in, preset, load, and there should be one in here which says T, T102. That's the top box, we'll load that. So yes, T18 sub, we'll use that, loaded okay. So these are 21s, they're not 18s, but it's close enough. Um, if I go in here and in here with signal, then that'll drive these two sets of connections. Um, this one here is this amp, this one here is this amp, so we'll turn it off because we're not using it. and. Why does that not just go off whenever you hold? Maybe you have to be out of that mode. That looks like it's crashed. Oh, superb. Come on, switch off. I don't have time for this. Right. So, before we do anything, let's plug in a radio mic receiver. And um, today we'll be working on line level, so a bit of power there, that's nice and snug, we'll not worry about that. And here's a radio mic receiver, which will be on each float, or on the, the front, middle and front, and we'll take a signal lead out of there. Um, obviously we're not going to plug speakers into it yet until we've got it tuned. So can anybody remember the numbers from before? 630.500 uh, Frequency, let's do it this way here, so we'll go into Advanced, I think it is, which I've just gone past Tune, and 
the numbers are going to be 630.500 so that's going to climb up 630.5 see the signal already and it's not quite tuned so that's audio level of Neg's Hen this is what we had and then we'll do the output of plus 18 see if it'll go up any higher, probably not AF out so it's, it is just a radio mic but it's throwing out quite the bit of level it's almost line level so on this lead now we should have almost line level and um, we'll do a Willie McLaughlin here and make this reach first amp so the first amp is now showing level and we'll bounce across to it's hard to do this with one hand you, you try doing it with one hand it's not easy so if I do this it then should go into the first amp and out and into the next amp uh, or not three and just check the wiring on the back so there's a door here which should never be opened you don't know where it last was so yeah that's the wrong way so not thinking out of one can run these here as bi-amp or run them as passive so that now should be going in there and going down to that one so if we plug our 3 meter lead here, let me just set you up and you can watch this bit I'll plug this here into the one that says sub this is the third amp down and um, it should just work, it'll be really loud yes it is that's speech which doesn't have a lot of sub content now this one then will do mid top so we'll go up to the trailer and bring down a mid top and we'll have it ready there. So we'll go up and get that and I'll see you back here in a wee second. Right, so that's uh, the mid high. I've just brought one up because it's enough to demonstrate and I'll have to smart this whole system again because the settings for these here, while it should be okay, it's probably drifted slightly. And uh, well, not that it would drift, but we just might be able to make it better. The the eighteens that these used to go with, um, which is the preset that's on the third amp, um, they kind of all died. Um, they're on a big pile in the warehouse here. That's them. And there's well, there was sixteen of them, and I think out of sixteen. There's one working. So they just don't do sub. They do bass very well, but they don't do sub bass. This does sub bass. This will go down to 20 hertz. Um, designed by a guy called Willie McLaughlin. Genius. Um, I made them and he designed them. And I used a bit of a, a program called Horn Response to work out the calculations of the thing, but it was his idea and I don't take credit for it at all other than building them. Now these are I think 12 years old now at this point but they've done okay they, they really have so if we click this in here we get sub and we click this in here we should get mid high more sub. I'm gonna drive the sub a good bit harder. Who's ringing? Somebody's ringing. It could be this guy. He's maybe got lost. Right, right I've kicked the sub up a bit. Sub. Six decibels and um, it certainly makes a difference. Biggest hit. 
Yay. Right, well look, the guys have been here and they've heard the system have uh, run the wireless link from inside the warehouse out into the trailer here and I've disconnected all of that so they're delighted with what they've heard um, I'm going to turn around, I've had to connect the power supply because for some reason GoPros the battery lasts about 15 minutes um, so there's 8 of these boxes here the, the 60 by 30 top box and um, they don't all work unfortunately so the next part of the project today um, is to fix them so that we have 8 working because the way this works is that they have f uh, 3 floats and the back one will have PA pointing forwards the middle one will have the same PA pointing back with the wireless link and then the middle one will have another PA system pointing forwards and the front float will have PA pointing back so you have two sets of performers um, two sets of music with a, a front and a back um, so to get these all working I've just disconnected the sub here and I've, I've just plugged these all in so but really quite simple I've got the radio plugged directly into the amps and uh, one. That's, that's in shape. This one here, I don't think it's got an HF working. So that's got no HF at all. Um, those two at the front I've just done. So these speakers were fitted with a fuse, and the fuse is rated at two and a half amps, I think. The first thing to check is to make sure that there's a working fuse. And fuses are nearly impossible to see, so we'll just use the meter. Good fuse, okay. We'll set that up there safely. So we're going to have to go in further. Now, what have we got in terms of screw? Not that one. Um, Posi drive looks like a PZ2. Yes, that's perfect. And then this one here is a big Allen head screw. That's perfect. I'll use this. And the drill. You don't need the meter. Always turn the meter off, otherwise you'll end up having to put a new battery in it even though it does shut off itself, it doesn't really. Come on here. You know this drill is a new feature, I, I love it. So you can just go straight in with the screwdriver attachment. These boxes are now 12 years old. They were designed by a guy called William. Absolute genius. I'll wait for this one. You think it's a good product? I got them. I'll use them. Rust. So this is P-Audio and it's the Pre-Neo range which is the Neodymium 100 watt compression driver and it's a 2 inch compression driver and just with the climate here in Northern Ireland which is always quite damp and been 12 years old it doesn't help that there's green on the wires that might be part of it so 
We'll get the meter into that and see if we've got a voice coil. Oh, four ohms. It could it be that this wire is just so horrible on this one? Let's see, red wire up to. Red wire should come up to the fuse actually. Where's the red wire there? Red wire is good. Black wire. Black wire. Let me see now. Fuse holder. Okay, that's bizarre. put the crimp connector onto that to something which is tinned there's a chance so I'll come back with some of those wee crimp connectors right I've got these little spuds which means the okay take a bit of the copper off that it's like a little spigot so I'm hoping that whenever I put these here on, I'll squeeze the absolute life out of them using this tool here. Now, I'm on the blue crimp, but I'm going to use the red one because I want to squeeze the life out of it. That's good. And then if it goes bad again the next time, then that's fine at least. problem here actually. The spring has gone on this one. Let's put a bit of spray on that. So this, this stuff here is, um, it says a whole lots of things here in different languages but I'm not going to even try to. Um, maintenance spray, contact spray, rust parts loosener, turbo spray, anti-corrosion, I don't know. Good. See if it works. And then while we're at it, we'll spray some of the rest of this stuff in here because it's so rusty and horrible. So that in there, we'll spray the mag on the mid range. Fine. Bolt holes. Good. Right, 
Right, before we do anything, let's put the fuse back into it, which is here. Now, can anybody tell me the value? I've got really good quality very focals. That says T, no, F. Is it an F or a T? F for fast blow. 1.6. That's fine, I'm happy with that. Because I think the 2 amp, or the 2.5 amp, was too much. And a little bit of feedback, and it takes the fuse out. And that's okay. I think I would much rather have a fuse come out than lose the driver and bring this all up. So let's turn on the radio. That's signal present. Let's get the HF wire, which is this one. Chef there. Let's make sure the mid's working as well. Now we'll <laughs> yep, both working. Try okay, both connectors. Lovely. So that can go back together again. That's a done deal. Thank goodness for that. Put a bit of that magic spray on these. What setting is the torque of this drill? Well, how do you do that? I can't remember. Maybe there's not a torque setting on it. Do you do it with this? So if it doesn't work, that's okay. I have coils spare. So mid-range, HF. No HF. Okay, it's fine. So all of that needed to be done anyway. So off with his head. So just check the wiring using the meter. Make sure that we've got connection right the whole way through from the fuse holder and down. So pins one, pins two, plus minus is where the fuse is. Yep, good connection there. So from the connector block to the Compression driver wiring, both good. Compression driver itself, this is okay. I've got spares of these, so it's just that's fine. And no continuity, good because I really want you to see this. It's going to be such a dull video otherwise.
right. Um, I've got a spare diaphragm here, which is, it's not actually the right one, it's for the BMD 750 driver. Um, this is the pre-neo, which is the neodymium version. And it's a smaller magnet, so therefore the push terminals are slightly further in. So I don't particularly care about the push terminal, um, but what I do care about is having it work. So we very carefully put that down there and remove this diaphragm. Get a bit of a look inside and see what's going on. Now, I could take the whole assembly out, but I think it's just the same working with it here. Plenty of access. These were originally designed for the BMD 750. Um, the pre neo is lighter by a whole lot, which means these boxes are slightly more manageable by yourself. Okay. Now, Take this out. So that's the heat sink, and this is the voice coil. Absolutely welded into place. There's ferro fluid, I can see it, that's round here and in there as well. And there's the difference between the new one and the old one. These legs are slightly longer. So there's a couple of things that could happen here. One is we take these screws out and move, just grind those bits off because they're meant to be right there at the start. And then just attach a couple of wires. You can't get this anymore, they, they just don't have them. It's a special order to somewherefaraway.com. We'll do one last check and make sure that the coil is definitely gone. But it's still not these connections, these squeezy things. But I don't think it's the squeezy things. It's hard to do with one hand, two hands. So that's what it should sound like. And that's what it does sound like. Dead as a doornail. Well that's good. Okay, so that's gone. This one's brand new because I've just taken it out of a, a 1.4 inch compression driver. And it's the same component, so. We get ohm. 4 ohm nominal. If we put it up to the proper ohm thing, it should probably say. Yeah, 6.5. It's fine. The DC part of it is 6.5, 8 ohms, whenever it's had its operating impedance or frequency. I mean, there's a possibility that that whole thing could be taken off there, but why would you? Just Let's just make it work. The problem that we're now going to have, and it's okay, I don't mind, and there's a number of things that can be done here. Let's very carefully set that down. Get rid of these screws. That will not fit in there because the two terminal 
prods will offset it too far. They're also a different shape, which is fine. So where it has to go to, which is there, I could just use, or I could put them on and take, take the grinder. Would that work? What's the implications of taking off that piece of thing there? What does it do apart from probably nothing? Does it seal it? Seal with that, it's probably not going to matter. That would mean that those would stick out further. And that would be absolutely fine, I don't care about that. I don't think we can move these bits of plastic terribly easily. What would you do? Wait for the right one to come, six months. Or get them all going and just go for it. Let's take the grinder and slice that off. Will it have an effect on the strength? I actually don't think so. Because it's this piece here that pushes down with this rubber against that coil. So it's transferring its energy in. This is doing nothing, it's not leaning against anything. So I'm happy enough to, to just nick that, so we'll come back to you in a second. So I've just finished using the grinder here to cut. I know it's terrible, it's terrible, but you know what? I can't get the, the other diaphragms. So, see if this fits. And if it doesn't, that's okay. That is absolutely fine and dandy. But I can confirm that that is now fitting perfectly. And it does stick out a little bit, but this has got no mechanical bearing at all. It's just a, a flange that covers the inner gubbins of that. Um, there's nothing can get in past that once that's mounted tight onto there. So I'm happy just to go ahead and put that on and see what happens. So, it do, I mean, at, at first glance, it doesn't look like it's out of place. It really doesn't. And then the final one, so that doesn't ever want to come out. The magnet's so strong that it's holding on to that like terribly. Let go. Scallywag. Another one there. So I've just done these up just hardly finger tight at all. So there's torque. This is going to do these for every single one, isn't it? And there's torque. Make sure now we'll plug in. Hard to do with one hand. There used to be a pair of light bulbs that sat, and I don't know if they worked or not. Just they stopped working and they were just crap, so that's what that wire there is for. It doesn't do anything now, so could probably take that out at some point. It's fine. 
Okay, let's do a quick bit of spray all over it. It's fine. Spray that. It doesn't matter. This is an anti-rust sort of a thing. Put a bit more here on this back screw thread. I'm going to put this back on. We should still have radio 2 at the end of this wire. So mid, first of all. Hi. That's good. It's there. That was an amazing height to work at, I have to say. So, we'll work with this one at the same height. And that's why I have a sore back. package. I'll just make this turn on this time so we have signal on both. So just work. Yep. Yep. Bent with the knees doesn't work either. My knees are just sore now. Right. This should work as well. Yep. Yep. needs paint. Come on the beach, me. The sunrise, any of those... 